doing some voiceover on this video because I still don't have my sound worked out on the new camera quite yet. This is Chase. He's been with me for about a month at home. He was working cows with his owner. Pretty um, independent as far as he would take some direction from her. So right now I'm trying to get him to take direction when I need him to. So I'm not going to let him go to cattle until I send him. Um, but I'm not going to put a whole lot of pressure on him yet to stay with me because he does tend to get a little bit um, bent out of shape about that part. So I'm just going to have him sit and then try to send him in a direction that I want him to go. This is the come by direction. So I'm just going to step into his shoulder, kind of walk with him if he needs support. Uh, when he backs out of the pressure, I'm just going to say, hey, uh -uh, hey, what are you doing? Until he stops and then I can either call him with me or try to send him again. So he's just learning that he's got to go the way that I ask. We're going to make it happen even if I have to help him with that. I've got uh, no long line on him at this point in time. He's very much a driving dog. He likes to drive the cattle, um, kind of get behind and uh, not follow, but just push him along. And he likes to be on the same side as me, so I'm just going to parallel walk with him until he feels comfortable enough that he can go through and get around the cattle. Uh, once that opens up and he's uh, got a lot of space along the fence, he will go, but then he kind of splits them up. So he goes through the middle of the cattle. He's got uh, one direction that he likes over the other, and that's pretty normal for most dogs. So if you let him choose, he's always going to go the direction that's easiest for him. And at this point, I'm not going to allow him to choose. Um, because that doesn't uh, do me any good as far as teaching him which way to go. So finally kind of get him on the back side of cattle. If I see him, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on him to go basically what it's called is balancing off. He needs to balance off. So he needs to get behind cattle and then he needs to move from side to side, keeping them going in the right direction. And that's what he's not quite doing yet um, consistently. So I just need to help him if he's unsure about going into that tight space. So that is one of the things that he struggles with is tight spaces. So I can, uh, you can kind of picture it as um, on the rim of a cup, basically the dog, or like on a clock, the dog would be the 12 o'clock to my six. And I'm just kind of either following him around or pushing him around that clock. Um, and he should balance off um, in a position to bring cattle directly to me. So if he's not, I'm just going to step into his shoulder just like that. And as soon as he moves off my pressure, I'm back up and I let him go back to work. So I am adding the directions in at this point. Away would be counterclockwise, come by would be clockwise. You can do that as you're starting a dog. You can just start saying the directions you want them to go whenever they're going in those directions. But again, the dog, um, in order to take direction, um, needs to know that if you say a direction, it's not his choice on which way to go, you, that they have to do what you're asking them to do. So in this case, I send him away and he was having a little bit of a struggle with this direction this time and those two cattle back there they just kind of decided they were going to hang out because he didn't go all the way far enough to make them come so I just step into him kind of push him out tell him uh -uh, we can't leave those um, and send him away again and so right here he's on the struggle bus a little bit we're going to have a hard time uh, getting him to go all the way down this fence line he just doesn't like that direction it's tight there's a draw in this direction of the field basically the cattle have buddies that are hanging out along that back fence and they don't want to come off the back fence so it is a lot more pressure on the dog so you can see how he's trying to go the come by direction i will not allow that because i've asked him to go away so even if I have to put my hand on his collar, I'm trying to pressure him right there. And he says, I'm having a hard time with this. And he leaves the pressure. Um, so I don't want that to happen. This is his thing that he does at home. He lays down um, to kind of get out of, uh, I guess, get out of doing stuff. But it doesn't work for him because I'm always going to make him get up. 
I am going to put the leash on him. And it's amazing how that works because he um, immediately is like, okay, fine. I can go that direction when I have a leash on. So I just kind of walk him into the corner. I just want him to maintain pressure on the cattle. You can see this black one in the back corner is just watching him. So you could tell the dog's not moving forward. The cow is trying to decide, is he going to make me move or not? So Chase has to hold that pressure. I do take the leash off of him because I don't want, I'm at the point now where I don't want to use that as a crutch too much unless I absolutely have to. So he figures out, okay, I did have to go the way that I didn't want to go. But then, so once he's done that, he's done what I've asked him to do, then I'm going to allow him to balance off. So now I'm basically telling him, just bring the cows, buddy. So he's got to put a little pressure on them. They don't want to come off of this back fence here. Um, and they're broke, so they know dogs. And so they know if the dog's not going to make them do something, then they can just stand there and get what they want. So he does have to kind of go back and forth, side to side. I don't mind a little bit of bark if the dog is making some progress. I do not want him to stand and bark at cattle without backing that up with a bite if necessary. I don't want my cattle to be bitten unnecessarily, but a lot of times if a dog will just stand and bark, it draws the cattle's attention onto them and then the cattle realize that all the dog's gonna do is stand there and bark and it irritates them and they start a fight. So as long as Chase is barking along with making some movement, I'm okay with that. If he stands and barks excessively, I do get on to him about it. Um, he's starting to kind of swipe around, uh, but he's figuring out how he can move these cows and that's fine. As long as he's into it, he's wanting to work, he's trying to work with me taking direction, I am going to allow some of that. So he's starting to balance off. You can see I'm able to stay on my side here and not so much have to come around and tell him to get back, get back, or, or come by and away. He's actually balancing off trying to bring the cattle to me. So this is wonderful. So we worked through our little issue at the beginning and I'm finding that's pretty standard with Chase. Um, initially, if you put any pressure on him to do what you ask, he gets a little bit bent out of shape but then if you can kind of work him past it and show him that we're a team, we're going to do this together, we're going to get this working for us, but you do have to listen, then he kind of settles into work and we can get some successful stuff uh, going. So again, right here, they're packed into a corner. I did this on purpose because he does have trouble going into tight spaces. Um, so I kind of walked into... Um, where I could have him put the cattle in that corner and then I'm gonna send him around to bring them out of the corner. Uh, so just practicing the stuff that's hard for him over and over. And if that means that I have to help him, I have to walk into the corner with him, help him get the cattle moving, make him feel secure about being there, then that's fine. So as soon as he gets him out of that corner, I can go back to walking around and trying to um, allow him to bring the cattle. So you can see he's doing a little bit more um, bouncing off he came a little bit too far up on that one but I just step into him and uh, that should push him back towards the back of the cattle so right here you can see he's trying to drive so he and I are kind of parallel to each other he's trying to drive the cattle are really drawn to this back fence here so they leave and I've got to send him to go get them so that's a way, or that's actually come by, I'm sorry. And he actually did a really lovely job there. It will be nice to see him start to do that on his own when he gets a little bit more confident, um, but that was great. So he's gonna cover all the cattle, which is fantastic. Again, I'm not gonna get upset with him at this point about the little bit of rushing and barking. Uh, because he's working with me, he's really trying. So at the end here, I'm just gonna put a little pressure on him to stop and we're gonna call it good.